What's the scariest or strangest thing you've seen in a national park or national forest part three? Get comfy and enjoy the show. If you're into it, smash that subscribe button and spread the word about Thread Tonic. Account one. I moved to the woods a few years ago. Huge black bears, yes. Kind of scary, but there's been other weird stuff. Once walking with my 16-year-old niece in the woods, I heard a deep, mean growl two feet from us. It was a pretty open area. We both looked at each other and freaked out. This wasn't a growl from a bear or cougar or any animal I could think of. We ran back to the house. Also, my daughter came running to me asking if I called her, saying she heard me say, come here. I was inside and never said a word. A neighbor recently told me she sees a woman in 1800s clothing in her home and also in the woods. She has also seen a little girl in a white nightgown with dark hair. Both are not friendly. Also seen deer not acting normal. Account two. Went camping with a friend, both about nine or 10, and we decided to explore the woods at night. We were about five minutes away from the campsite. The stars were stunning and it was wild that you could hear and kind of see some wildlife. We were walking back and I turned around. I could hear something trailing behind us. I asked her to flash her light and there was this thing in the distance. We could only see the outline of it, but my gut was telling me to run. We took off running and I could hear the thing barreling after us. We were close to the campsite, so whatever it was, stopped following us the moment we made it onto the site. We assumed it was a monster or a beast. Now, I clearly remember the shape of the thing. It was a person. Account three. My two buddies and I encountered a black bear in Olympic National Park that confirmed that black bears cannot be outrun. We were on the west side of the park at the start of a week-long backpacking trip, driving to a campsite. From the side of the forest road, a black bear busted through the bushes and onto the road in front of me. I was cruising along at 25.30 mph, and the bear swerved away from my car and turned up the road. It proceeded to accelerate away from my car in the time I took to realize what was happening. Breathtaking. Easily 300 LEBIs of black bear running at better than 30 mph, like a thoroughbred horse with claws and teeth. As he put a distance between himself and my car, he looked over his shoulder as if to make his point and bounded back into the brush beside the road. Humans cannot outrun a bear. Account four. The time I sat in a meadow on Isle Royale, Lake Superior, and within moments I was covered in butterflies. Do not wear a flowered shirt in the wilderness unless you want to attract bees or butterflies. Account 5. While my boss and I were hiking about four miles deep into the woods in the North Georgia area, not really hiked too often, we encountered a group of people wearing a bunch of animal masks like rabbit, raccoon, squirrel, bear, etc. They were all gathered around a fire with music playing from a Bluetooth speaker. I waved and kept going and found a way to turn around without walking back by and got out of there. They didn't say anything or wave back, but it was definitely a strange thing to witness. Also, just random stairs not attached to anything deep in the middle of nowhere, basically. Account 6. There's a national park a few hours drive from us that my family likes to camp in every year. We usually drive down old logging roads and find random locations to camp instead of using the campground. It's more private and we've found some awesome spots over the years. When I was 13, we found a really cool spot nestled between two large ponds. You follow this logging road for a few miles and then it slowly starts to turn into overgrowth. Lots of little hills and downed trees, tall weeds, etc. At the time, we didn't have a vehicle capable of four-wheel drive, so we lugged our gear on foot and set up on the hill between the ponds. Everything went smoothly until about 2 a.m. Out of nowhere, two massive black trucks came roaring in. These trucks were literal clown cars, jam-packed with dudes. They completely ignored our camp, completely ignored our family asking what they were doing so late, didn't pay us any mind at all. They all got out of the trucks, waded into the ponds with nets, spent a little over an hour kidnapping frogs, piled back into their trucks and left with the frogs from the pond. They did this completely silently. No lights, no talking, just quietly walking through the pond, skimming nets along. When we arrived, the ponds were overrun with frogs, and listening to them all was really cool. After the frog kidnapping, the ponds were silent and still. The following morning, we found a lone survivor with an injured leg and returned him to the pond. But the ponds stayed silent the rest of the camping trip. Frog isn't a terribly popular dish around here, but I assume they took the frogs to eat. 
The silent abductors were super strange, though. You'd think they'd be like, whoa, hey, sorry to intrude, just frog hunting. Or that they'd at least use flashlights. We've camped that spot a few times since then, and we've never encountered the frog kidnappers again. The following year, same park but different spot, we got robbed by a bear. Someone left an opened pack of marshmallows in the beer cooler and didn't shut the lid correctly. We woke up sometime in the very early morning hours to see a black bear casually carrying off our cooler. That morning we did recover the cooler, but the marshmallows were gone and he squished a few beer cans in the process of his theft. Account 7. I worked in Yellowstone for a summer. I was coming back into the park late one night and came across a car that had plowed right into a bison. The really creepy thing was that the driver was nowhere to be seen. The car was just sitting in the road with the lights still on while the still alive bison lay there twitching. Realistically, I'm sure the driver just caught a ride with someone else to get help, but I couldn't help but picture someone bleeding and stumbling their way through the pitch dark wilderness. This was back when there was very little cell service in the park, so I had to drive on for another 15 minutes until I got to a campground with a working payphone. To this day, I still don't know exactly what happened or if the driver was okay. Account 8. On a trail outside Round Meadow in Sequoia National Park, I was taking a walk with a tour guide friend. We rounded a corner on the trail, stumbled upon a black bear on his hind legs, about five feet tall, within three feet of us. Following the advice of a ranger, I held out my hand and introduced myself to the bear. He just sauntered away. We heard a noise in the tree above us. It was the mama bear sliding down toward us. We ran like hell! Account 9. My brother and I were hiking and camping through a provincial park in Alberta, Canada, when we came across a young man who had taken his own life. He was pretty far off the beaten path, and we had no cell service. We had to hike back and report it so the authorities could come get him. Account 10. Drove up the east coast of Australia with some mates to camp in national parks and get ludicrously intoxicated. We brought with us a liquor store's worth of booze, bags of weed, and several handfuls of magic mushroom caps. Since I wasn't driving, I decided to eat eight of the caps before we even left our border. By the time we entered the national park and started setting up our campsite, the sun was already setting and I was already hallucinating, meaning I was a completely unhelpful but hilarious mess of a camper. Q grilling over the fire, drinking whiskey, and smoking gigantic joints. At around midnight, my normal bodily functions returned in earnest, and we realized that we hadn't even looked for a restroom before it got dark. So I grabbed a roll of toilet paper, turned on my headlamp, clutched a gigantic hunting knife between my teeth, and strolled a hundred or so meters to take a dump in the river. Imagine a drug-crazed man with his pants around his ankles, squatting on a river bank, clutching a gigantic knife between his teeth, with the light from his headlamp darting around the darkness. Everywhere I pointed the light, I would see rotten, decrepit zombies shambling out of the bush around the riverbank. Never have I defecated so quickly, all the while hyperventilating and freaking out about the hallucinatory undead coming to feast on my flesh. After I got back to the campsite, the night went as well as any drug-fueled campout goes. Woke up the next morning, stepped out of my tent to take a piss only to find a public toilet block not 50 meters from our campsite. I have never laughed harder at myself than I did that morning. And that's the story of the most terrifying shit I've ever taken, in a national park no less. Account 11. A few summers ago I went solo camping in a remote part of a national forest. After setting up camp near a small, quiet lake, I was jolted awake around midnight by low, guttural growls. The growls circled my campsite, moving closer and then farther away. I shone my flashlight into the darkness. Suddenly the growling stopped and an eerie silence fell, but I saw nothing. Then out of nowhere, a loud bone-chilling howl pierced the night. It sounded almost like a wolf, but far more menacing and powerful. I didn't sleep a wink that night and I left at dawn. Account 12. Mountain biking in Southern California came across some deer stopped to watch them walk by. Mountain lion jumps out of the bushes and mauls one and kills it right in front of us. I've had five mountain lion encounters, including that one, and it is always intense. Account 13. I was at Grand Teton National Park. We'd taken a boat across Jenny Lake and were hiking back around. On the way back, we were passing a family with a couple of kids that were just goofing off and being kids. 
One of the boys trips and his head hits right on a rock. It was seriously the worst sound I've heard in my life. And he starts screaming in pain. It was scary because we were three or four miles from the visitor center. It's not like anyone could call an ambulance. I really hope he was okay. Account 14. I was once hiking with an acquaintance in the wilds of West Virginia. Little did I know my trip was about to get even wilder than the wilderness around me. My friend had a small bag of Cheerios and wanted to eat them. So what he did was he got out his bowl, scooped up some mountain water, poured a small amount of Cheerios onto the water, then poured powdered milk on the cereal, then started chowing down. It was goddamn bizarre. He didn't mix it or anything. I had seen him eat cereal before and he usually just did it the normal way. I guess the lack of normal liquid milk led him to trying strange ways of eating cereal with powdered milk. I remember he gave me some explanation of why he did it the way he did it, but I don't remember the explanation. Account 15. In increasing scale of scariness, waking up to the sound of a bear swimming to your tent camp in the early morning hours, hearing the telltale sniff behind your shoulder and seeing a sow and cub 15 meters away after they've followed your trail to your survey, hazing off a wounded boar from your tent camp that lost the nearby moose cache you boated by earlier in the day, it starts to leave, and then turns right around again, and again, and again, spending 48 hours in a remote plywood cabin in a sustained 40 miles per hour, Willowaw, hearing the loose pumice slam and scour the wood, and feeling the building absorb each successive shockwave, crossing a glacial river with a 50 LBS pack knowing a misstep might be your last. The scariest? The sound of your single-engine plane cutting out as your tank runs out of fuel. Full disclosure, I work in that national park with all the salmon-eating bears. Account 16. Not so much what I saw, but what I dreamt. I was in Sequoia National Park last year, camping in the bed of my truck. Before I went to sleep, I crawled up on top of a boulder to look at the stars. While up there, I found mortar bowls and sharpening crevices left there by Native American tribes. In the middle of the night, I thought I woke up, and suddenly I was no longer in my truck or near any kind of campground, but in the middle of the forest in my sleeping bag. I looked to the left of me, and there was what appeared to be a writhing mass of hundreds of black eel-like snakes slithering past me on the ground. Then, out of the mass of snakes, a rattlesnake appeared and attempted to bite me through my sleeping bag. After kicking out a few times, it re-entered the column of snakes and disappeared. I then looked to see where the snakes were going, and they were crawling into the sliced open stomach of a large black horse that I was resting my head on. After seeing that, it gave me such a scare that I woke up jumping out of my truck. To this day, I've never had a dream like that, and I'm not much of a superstitious man, but I feel it had something to do with the carvings in the rock and the spirits of those who lived there before. Account 17. My dad used to tell a story about a deer hunt he went on out west. The guy who owned the ranch had mentioned something about a cougar taking out some cattle, and they were going to get the dogs out and tree it later that week, but to look out for it while he was out there. So dad's like walking out to the blind or tree stand or whatever at like 4 a.m. before shooting light, and on the edge of this field he heard the grass shifting slowly, kind of like a mountain lion slinking through. Dad gets all paranoid and kind of holds up and waits to see if this thing's going to come out of the grass towards him. He said about 10 minutes pass and nothing happens, and as soon as he turns his back to keep walking, he just hears a loud rustle and sound of grass and whatnot crunching. He spins around thinking a mountain lion is about to just maul him, and a frickin' turkey just barrels out of the field right at him and past him flapping its wings. To this day, neither of us has seen turkeys out of their roost that early, but it's a pretty hilarious story. Does really well at deer camp now. Account 18. Most islands off the coast of Thailand are national parks. Once I walked from one side of an island to the other. On my way back, I came across a quartet of wild piglets with little racing stripes. The scariest part was when the sow snorted in the direct opposite direction from the piglets. I stood perfectly still. She snorted again and the piglets disappeared into the brush. I stayed perfectly still for another 10 minutes. <laughs>